23 things you don't know about Naomi Scott. Hello viewers. How are you? Welcome to Nibir Network. Today we will discuss of some unknown facts Naomi Scott who played the role of Jasmine in the live action movie of Aladdin 2019. Naomi Grace Scott was born in 6th of May 1993. She is an English actress and singer. She is best known for her starring role, as Princess Jasmine, in Disney's live-action adaptation, of the musical fantasy film Aladdin, 2019, for which she also contributed to its soundtrack. Scott has also featured in the science fiction drama series, Terra Nova, 2011, and the Disney Channel teen film, Lemonade Mouth, 2011, and has starred as Kimberly Hart, in the superhero film, Power Rangers. Long before she was playing Princess Jasmine, Scott was a teen appearing in Disney Channel projects, and then a 20-something trying to make the always difficult transition, toward more serious adult projects. I had a couple of years in my early 20s when I was nearly getting jobs and not getting them, she told The Telegraph. But she's grateful for the valuable lessons that she learned during that period in her life. That was a really important time because I learned, does my world fall apart? Am I letting this be my identity, she said. I'm so glad I went through that before going on a world platform. Now that she is on a world platform, it's time that we learn a little bit more about her. Here's the untold truth of Naomi Scott. Scott was born in Hounslow, London. Her mother, Usha Joshi, was born in Uganda, of Indian Gujarati descent, and emigrated to the United Kingdom at a young age. Naomi's father, Christopher, is English. Scott also has an older brother, Joshua Scott. Both her parents are pastors at the Bridge Church, Woodford in Redbridge, North East London. Scott has participated in missionary and outreach work. She attended Davenant Foundation School in Lawton, Essex. Let's dive into our discussion topic. Number 1. Her mom and dad are both pastors. Because Scott's parents are both pastors at a Pentecostal church in the UK, one might think that she had religion forced on her while growing up. But Scott told The Telegraph that wasn't the case at all. She credited her parents with giving her room to find religion on her own, which ended up making her faith stronger in the long run and helped her relate better to non-believers. Yes, I have a belief system, Scott said, but I don't know everything, and we're all just as messed up as each other. Scott called her parents' church diverse and a big family. It's also where she started singing. She was a part of the church band and would sing gospel music every Sunday. Scott told Hypebee, growing up in the church fostered an inner spirituality that also introduced me to the concept of music having a deeper meaning. Number 2. Bend It Like Beckham was literally made for her. Like so many other kids in the UK, Scott played soccer in her youth. And it sounds like she would have kept playing the sport, better known as football in the UK, if she was good enough. She told the UK edition of Vogue, loved football, but you hit a certain age and you feel like that's not something you can do anymore. I do remember that and feeling like, why can't I do it too? So when the British romantic comedy, Bend It Like Beckham, was released in 2002, Scott, whose father is English, and whose mother's family emigrated from India to Uganda, and then ended up in the UK, connected with the film on a whole other level. She said it was her favorite movie growing up. It was an Indian girl who wanted to play football, Scott told Vogue. That movie was literally made for me. I just thought I was Jess Minder. The coincidences don't end there. Scott told Vogue, via the Daily Mail, I even played football in that same park as a kid. That was me. Number 3. Her first kiss gone bad. You never forget your first kiss, but if your first kiss went the way Scott's did, maybe you would want to. Things didn't go as smoothly for her as one would hope for such a big moment. She told W Magazine in a video interview that her very first smooch went down behind the sports hall in her secondary school and that the boy didn't exactly whisper sweet nothings in her ear afterward. I remember he said this is so racist he said I had curry breath, Scott recalled. 
After I kissed him he said I had curry breath. Harsh. Was the boy making a stereotypical remark about Scott due to her Indian background? Or did she, in fact, have curry breath in that moment? Scott doesn't seem to rule out either scenario. I could have very well had curry breath, by the way, Scott said. It depends what my mom made the night before. Number 4. She was discovered by chance. Talk about being at the right place at the right time. Scott was discovered when she was singing at her parents' church at age 12. Kelly Bryan A member of 90s R&B girl group Eternal, just so happened to be on hand in another room and immediately was taken aback by Scott's voice. I was speaking at her mum and dad's church and I heard this person singing in the background, Brian told the Sunday I said, I want to sign her. I hadn't seen her, I didn't know what she looked like, I just heard her voice. Brian represented actors and not singers, but she very much wanted to represent the young girl, so she encouraged Scott to go into acting. She was like, but I don't act, Brian told the Sunday I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll work on that you will. Clearly, Brian has a good eye for talent. Number 5. She has Disney connection way back from Aladdin. Aladdin isn't the first time Scott has worked with the empire that brought, and still brings, magic into every child's home. She appeared in Disney's UK sketch show for teens, Life Bites, in 2009 and then followed that up with the 2011 Disney Channel TV movie Lemonade Mouth, which she filmed in Hollywood when she was 17. I was very green, it was my first movie, she told The Telegraph. I learned on the job, I had no training, no drama school. Scott said the TV musical still holds a special place in her heart, I gained lifelong friends and people still recognize me most from that movie. She's not kidding about the lifelong friends part. The band got back together, so to speak, in 2015 as depicted in the photo Scott posted on Instagram. And in 2017, Lemonade Mouth star Bridget Mendler joined Scott at the premiere of Scott's film Power Rangers as evidenced by Mendler's Instagram post with a sweet and supportive caption, So proud of my sis at Naomigska tonight you are the most beautiful and kick-ass pink ranger ever. Number 6. She got married at super young age. Not only did Scott get discovered in her parents' church, but she also met her future husband and journeyman soccer player Jordan Spence there. Scott was 16 at the time and would go on to marry Spence in 2014 when she was 21. If you think that's really young to get married, you're not alone. Scott feels the same way. I was never that person who wanted to get married young. It was never what I yearned for, but isn't that the way, she told the Telegraph. Scott is quick to point out that Spence is no dumb jock. She said he's an avid reader and he cooks. But as Scott's career is starting to heat up, Spence seems to be struggling to find stability in soccer. He has bounced around various clubs in England such as West Ham, Ipswich Town and MK Dons and occasionally found himself unemployed. Spence jokingly told the East Anglian Daily Times in 2017, normally it's the actresses that are out of work, not the footballer. Back then, he also said, she's working on a few things. Hopefully we get some family success this year. If he only knew. Number 7. Her lines were cut from an Oscar-nominated movie. Scott was so excited to have a small part in the 2015 Oscar-nominated, Matt Damon film, The Martian, that she picked out a special outfit and invited her friend to the film's special premiere in London. But as she told Jimmy Kimmel Live, that excitement eventually turned to disappointment when she realized her lines had been cut from the film. In retrospect, Scott feels she didn't deliver her best work in The Martian. I really don't blame them, because I was terrible, she told The Telegraph. It was all such a big deal, Ridley Scott directing and so on, that I got really nervous and choked, just dry-mouthed. I completely froze. If anything, the experience taught her how difficult it is to be an actor who comes on set to film just one scene. Now if I am a lead in a movie, I go out of my way to make that actor feel really comfortable. 
And just FYI, she wasn't completely cut out from the movie. She's in there briefly, she just doesn't say anything. Number 8. She teamed up with Diddy, sorta. You might have heard one of Scott's songs already and not even realized it. Her track Hear the Bells off of her Invisible Division EP was featured in a 2015 commercial for Sean Diddy Combs's De Leon Tequila. I'm so excited. Scott captioned her Facebook post of the 15-second commercial, which was part of De Leon's The Next Level ad campaign and ran frequently, and strategically, during Mad Men. The ad campaign for the high-end tequila also featured music by blues legend Muddy Waters. Combs told Adage, via statement, that people today want quick, enticing content and you have to capture them with the first beat. Scott said the song which was the first track on her first EP was personal for her. She told HuffPost, it was about me falling in love for the first time. Who would have guessed this special moment in her life would inspire a song that would end up in a tequila commercial? Number 9. She played matchmaker for Becky G. Not only is Scott a singer and actress, but she's also a matchmaker, at least she was for Becky G. In an interview with Mega 96.3 FM, fellow singer and actress Becky G said Scott told her, Girl, you're awesome, you deserve to be with a man when they were filming the 2017 Power Rangers movie. Scott then took it a step further, telling Becky G, I already know who you're going to marry. The person Scott had in mind was Los Angeles Galaxy soccer player Sebastian Letgett, who had previously played with Scott's husband, Jordan Spence. Becky G initially resisted, claiming she was focused on her career, until Scott showed her a video of Letgett. She tried to play it cool when in reality she was into the soccer stud. It kind of all went from there, Becky G said. The two began dating and judging by Becky G's Instagram pics, are still going strong. Well done, Naomi. Number 10. Top Shop was her saving grace for her Aladdin audition. The audition process for Jasmine was extensive. It's said hundreds of actresses around the world tried out for the role of the princess in the live-action Aladdin. Scott told W Magazine she bought a navy blue top with big sleeves for the audition, which she figured was perfect. It wasn't Jasmine's trademark light blue outfit, but that's a good thing. She said she didn't want to look like a cosplayer. Following the audition, Scott was asked to come back, only this time the casting directors had a few requests. Scott told W Magazine they asked, could she, uh, put a bit more makeup on and maybe a dress? Believe it or not, Scott claimed she didn't own a dress at the time, so it was off to the store to get one. And not some high-end boutique either. She told W Magazine she ran to Topshop and bought a flowery dress. It was light blue, she said. I never wore it again. Scott landed the role of Jasmine months later and, it would appear, now has more dresses in her closet. Number 11. The Aladdin casting backlash hurt. What should have been one of the most exciting moments, of Scott's career, turned sour, when news of her Aladdin casting was met with backlash. Scott's dad is British and her mom's family moved from India to Uganda, and eventually to the UK, but critics felt the role of Jasmine should be played by someone of Middle Eastern descent. Yet, the story takes place in the fictional city of Agrabah, but the legendary tale that inspired the movie was set in Baghdad. Scott admitted that she has a hard time ignoring the online trolls. It's hard, man, she told W Magazine. I'm not going to lie to you and say I never look at Twitter to see what people are saying about me. Anyone who says that is a liar. So you have to train yourself. It's actually like a discipline not to look. In an interview with The Telegraph, Scott echoed those sentiments, saying you genuinely cannot please everyone. That feeling of being misunderstood by people commenting about me, if I put energy into that, I will get nowhere. Asked if the backlash hurt, Scott responded, of course. You're human. Number 12. Singing is her first love. She might be better known for her acting career than her music, but Scott seems to want to change that. Music is my first love, 
she told the Telegraph, adding that she realized at age 11 that she was pretty good at this. Acting wasn't part of the plan. It kind of just happened, thanks to Kelly Bryan. However, acting is an avenue that has opened doors, Scott told Hypebee. I will eventually switch gears to solely music, but at the moment it is both. Scott released her debut EP, Invisible Division, in 2014 and followed that up with her Promises EP in 2016. She told The Telegraph that she has resisted signing with a label so that she has creative control over her music and because there is strength in owning her masters and publishing. Even with her acting career on the rise, Scott is determined to make music happen. She's just waiting for the right moment. I think that I have the bits that can translate commercially when the time is right, Scott told W Magazine. Number 13. Keeping the Faith Just because she's gone Hollywood doesn't mean Scott has lost sight of her faith. She told the UK edition of Vogue that religion continues to be a major part of her life, my faith is the foundation of every decision I make, and of my marriage. Some wonder how Scott and husband Jordan Spence balance their faith and high-profile careers, but Scott insisted it's not that hard. I don't know how I would do life without my faith, she said in an interview with children's charity Compassion. Quite honestly, I don't see it as this separate thing, this add-on thing. My faith is just a part of who I am and what I do. Her faith also has a heavy influence on her music. There has always been a connection between my faith, and realizing that music can have a soul and purpose, Scott said to Hypebee, which has ultimately affected the way I approach the art. Number 14. She initially turned down Charlie's Angels. Elizabeth Banks clearly liked what she saw from Scott on the set of the Power Rangers movie, because she wanted her to play one of the leads in the Charlie's Angels reboot that she was directing. Banks's peeps reached out to Scott's peeps and, according to Banks' interview with W Magazine, they were like, well, she's doing Aladdin. Bye. So what changed? The Charlie's Angels start date was pushed back and no longer conflicted with the Aladdin shoot. Scott auditioned for the role and Banks said studio execs knew after 40 seconds she was the right fit. I was looking for an every woman, Banks said. A relatable girl next door that audience members could look at and go, if that girl can become a Charlie's Angel, then I can, too. Scott will be joined on the big screen in late 2019 by fellow Angels Kristen Stewart and Ella Balinska. Number 15. She's worked with Steven Spielberg. Her first major US role came courtesy of Terra Nova, a dystopian sci-fi drama produced by the critically acclaimed director. She played Maddie, a teen whose family is chosen to join a new colony in a parallel time stream, while Earth faces an overpopulation crisis. After airing in 2011, it was cancelled after one season. Naomi went on to revisit sci-fi with a brief role in The Martian, appearing in the film's extended version. Number 16. Her Aladdin casting sparked some debate. When news of Naomi's Aladdin role broke last summer, not everyone was happy with Disney's decision. Jasmine is Middle Eastern, whereas Naomi has British and Indian heritage. In the view of many online commenters, her casting represented a missed opportunity to spotlight an Arab actress, or proof that Hollywood all too often sees women of color as interchangeable. To date, neither Disney nor Naomi has commented extensively on the row. Number 17. She's already a front row regular. Since the release of Power Rangers last year, Naomi has been a guest list regular for some of Fashion Month's most in-demand catwalk presentations. Last season alone, she attended shows by the likes of Stella McCartney, Loie, Valentino, and Erdem, so expect to see her sitting in the best seats in the house come September. Number 18. She shares a stylist with Lady Amelia Windsor. Naomi has been fine-tuning her red carpet style with the help of Sadrian Smith a fashion director who also counts one of our most stylish minor royals, Lady Amelia Windsor, among his clients. He's my right-hand man, slash angel, slash everything, she told WWD at Paris Fashion Week. According to Smith, their approach is a collaborative one. 
she's very, very, very involved in her vision and her aesthetic and what she wants to communicate visually, he told the magazine. Number 19. She was cast in The Martian. It is interesting to note that Scott was cast in The Martian as a character named Ryoko. However, people who remember seeing the movie in the movie theaters will remember no such character. This is because Scott filmed her scenes but the resulting material never made it into the final cut of the movie. Number 20. She was cast as the Pink Ranger. In 2017, Scott was one of the five people who played the leads in Power Rangers, which was a live-action movie based on the franchise of the same name. In the movie, she played the character Kimberly Ann Hart, who is remembered by fans of the franchise as the first Pink Ranger. Her part of the narrative focused on her efforts to change from being a mean cheerleader who had leaked a compromising photo of one of her teammates, the seriousness of which she didn't realize until she was faced with the consequences of her actions. Number 21. She's engaged in charity work. Scott actively works with the Christian charity, Compassion UK, as a brand ambassador. With Compassion UK, she helps the organization and the local churches it partners with to sponsor children and families around the world that live in extreme poverty, and works to provide them with education, medical needs, and financial assistance. Most recently, Scott traveled to Kigali, Rwanda to work with the charity. In a 2017 interview with The New Potato, Scott spoke about her and her husband's work with Compassion UK, saying it is about empowering kids, to make a difference in their families, and for them to become equipped to change their situations, as opposed to just giving them something, that they don't know what to do with. They are teaching them how to use those tools. We sponsor some kids and they do other projects that we're closely involved with. Number 22. She shares a stylist with a royal. Now that all eyes are on the actress, Scott has enlisted the help of Sadrian Smith to create her stunning looks for red carpet events and celebrity outings. As it turns out, Smith also styles Lady Amelia Windsor fashion model, relative of the royal family, and 39th in line to the British throne. While out during Paris Fashion Week last year, Scott spoke with WWD about her relationship with her stylist. Sadrian Smith is my right-hand man, slash angel, slash everything, she told the magazine. Smith explained that the gorgeous looks that Scott appears in isn't solely up to him, and that their work together is often collaborative by nature. She's very, very, very involved in her vision and her aesthetic and what she wants to communicate visually, he said. Number 23. Naomi has already appeared on Vogue. When people land a Vogue cover, it is often a sign that they have made it. The British actress can already check off that major accomplishment. She graced the cover of the April 2019 issue of British Vogue ahead of the release of Aladdin. In the issue's editor's letter, Edward Ennenthal talked about the rising star. Of course, I look forward to seeing Naomi Dazzle in Aladdin and kick ass in Charlie's Angels, but I'm also excited to see how she is going to energize a whole generation of British girls and young women, who will look at her story, her religion, her style, and work ethic, and see a different sort of ingenue from the sort that Hollywood used to fall for. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button below and please don't forget to share with your friends.